Kala Sawalan has now officially confirmed that Chris Eubank Jr. is absolutely in the running to replace George Groves in the super middleweight final of the World Boxing Super Series. This is a rumour that has been doing the rounds for the past 24 hours or so, but now there is official confirmation that this rumour is actually based on some fact. There's this article here on BoxingNews.net, BoxingNewsOnline.net. Boxing News is a very reputable, long-running boxing publication in the UK since 1909. All right? I used to buy the Boxing News all the time when they were still uh, doing actual physical publications. Now they're only online. So I'm going to quote what Callis Sowerland has said here. You guys can visit the article for yourselves if you also want to read it. But Callis Sowerland said, we're working on solutions where George Groves is fit and where Groves is not fit. We're not going to postpone finals months because it goes against the whole principle of it. I've been there and done it with the Super Six. So people can't tell, sorry, so people can tell me what they like about the finals. The tournament is bigger than any fighter and that's just the way it is. We're hopeful Groves will be fit, so we'll see. What I don't understand is people presuming we're booting Groves out of the tournament. We go back a long way and we'll do what we can for him. At the end of the day, if you're put, if you've put in a load of money into a concept like this, you can't turn around and say, we'll wait forever. You can't start the tournament and then have the final lingering into the next tournament. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. We have to make this a success through independent decision making. He goes on to say, absolutely, as far as Eubank, absolutely yes, a lucky loser. It's a common sporting term. Would I want to watch uh, Callum Smith, Eubank Jr. outside of the tournament? Absolutely. It's a great fight. We can push a month, but we can't push it back by three or four months. We have a substitute system. We said that from day one, and that's the situation. We're still hoping it's George Groves. Of course we are. So, anyway, Callis Sowerlin goes on to talk a bit more here. But bottom line is, they're not going to wait for George Groves. And there are some people who are in denial about it, who have been in denial about this, because I've been mentioning the fact that the World Boxing Super Series are sticklers for scheduling. Because they themselves have been saying this for months, even before the George Groves Eubank Jr. fight happened. If you look at Callis Sowerland's interviews, he's been very consistent from the very beginning of the World Boxing Super Series that scheduling is of paramount importance. And Kala is not the one behind this whole scheduling um, ethos, yeah? Kala is not the owner of the World Boxing Super Series. Kala is employed by the World Boxing Super Series. This is what you have to understand. The organizers, the money men who own the World Boxing Super Series, they are some of the same people who help to organize and uh, put on the Champions League, which is a football tournament. Right, a very famous football tournament in Europe, yeah? And the Champions League every year was, it started around the same time every single year. Kickoff was around the same time for each match. And that is what they are trying to replicate with the World Boxing Super Series. And they're trying to do it every year. A tournament like that cannot succeed if you're pushing back the finals all the time and doing all this kind of business. Yeah, the whole concept of it is to have a regimented routine-like structure like a Champions League in football. That's the whole concept of the World Boxing Super Series. That's why I'm not the least bit surprised that they're talking about replacing George Groves because they made it very clear from the beginning that this was what they were going to do. I I've got no idea why people were in... Because when I first brought this up and said a, a few weeks ago, it looks like they're going to replace George Groves there were people telling me oh no they're not going to replace Groves nonsense they're not going to do that they know Groves brings in all the money and people you <laughs> go and watch Kala's interviews for the past few months yeah they're very serious about replacing George Groves and it's looking more and more likely that they're going to replace him yeah and if you'd been listening and paid attention to what Kala had been saying 
you would know this and you, you wouldn't have been in denial. Now, I can't hate on them replacing George Groves. I can't hate on it because as Kala Sawalan said there, no fighter is bigger than the tournament. Yeah? It might cause, you know, some, uh, some dissent among the fans because of the fact that George Groves was the only world champion in the super middleweight version of this tournament. But this tournament is supposed to be an ongoing thing for years and years and years. Do you understand what I'm saying? The legacy of this tournament is not hinging on George Groves being in and out of the 2017-2018 slash season. The success of the, of the tournament is not hinging on that because they've got much bigger, grander, long-term plans than just doing one super middleweight tournament. Yeah? So I can't hate on them replacing Groves. The controversy is the fact that Eubank Jr. is being considered as a replacement for Groves. Now that is a strategic move from a financial point of view because out of all the substitutes that they could put in there in the final, Eubank Jr. is surely the one who's going to be able to sell the most tickets and generate the most interest in terms of selling this as a pay-per-view. Surely. Callum Smith against who else could generate the same amount of interest? Callum Smith against Bremer? Who else? I mean, they might be talking to world champions and that is viable if they were talking to a Gilberto Ramirez or a Benavidez or somebody like that to try and hop into the tournament. Maybe. But an issue with those guys who are not currently in the tournament or a Billy Joe Saunders or any of these guys, an issue could be negotiations. That could be an issue. Because all of the guys who have been involved in the tournament so far, they signed up to the tournament. They agreed to the terms and conditions of the tournament months ago, long before the tournament started. Even the substitutes for the tournament were signed up long before the tournament started. So all of the paperwork and all of the negotiation that had to be done with those fighters was done long ago in advance. At this stage now, if you're trying to get in a Gilberto Ramirez or a David Benavidez or a Billy Joe Saunders or any of these guys, you have to factor in their situation with their sanctioning bodies with regards to mandatories. You have to factor in their contractual obligations with their television networks, contractual obligations with their promoters, who's going to get what split, etc., etc. There's a lot of you know, paperwork to be sorted out before you can get a world champion in. It's much easier and it works much more smoothly if you bring in somebody who was already signed up as a substitute before the tournament started or you bring in somebody who has already partaken in the tournament but maybe lost in one of the earlier rounds. From a logistical point of view, it's much easier to do that. It just allows things to run more smoothly. So perhaps they are talking to a world champion right now. Perhaps they are talking to a James DeGale or a Gilberto Ramirez or a David Benavid. Perhaps they are talking to them guys. But if it gets to the point where they think that negotiations are not going to be quick, that they can't come to a deal quickly, they're going to go with Eubank Jr. Bramer is still a possibility and Bramer apparently was launching some type of legal battle to get himself into the final. <laughs> I don't know where, you know, what's going on with that at the moment, but that was the case. But as you see here, it's official. Chris Eubank Jr. is one of the front runners to replace George Groves. They ain't going to wait for Groves, man. And I can't blame them because, again, it's the concept. Do I want to see Groves in the final? Absolutely. I do want to see him in the final. I hope he's in the final. He deserves to be there. But, no fighter is bigger than the tournament. I have to respect that concept. I have to. If Chris Eubank Jr. does replace George Groves in the final, I mean, talk about 
getting a second bite of the cherry. <laughs> or a third bite of the cherry, if you're talking about the Billy Joe Saunders loss as well. If he makes it to the final against Callum Smith, will I be picking him against Callum Smith? No. Stylistically, I think Callum Smith is a much better matchup for Chris Eubank Jr. than George Groves. Yeah, I think Chris Eubank Jr., I, I think Callum Smith's style is much better suited to Chris Eubank Jr. than George Groves was. But it's not just a style issue here when it comes to Chris Eubank Jr. The two times that he's stepped up to world level, he hasn't just been found wanting from a technical point of view. He's been found wanting from a mental point of view. He bottled it against Billy Joe Saunders as far as I'm concerned and he bottled it against George Groves. He underperformed against George Groves. And I'm not saying that if he performed to the best of his ability, he would have won. I don't think he would have won. But he still didn't perform to the best of his ability as far as I'm concerned. His footwork wasn't as fast as normal. And even if it was as fast as normal, I'm not saying he would have beat Groves. Obviously, I'm not. Okay? Make that clear. What I'm telling you is, Eubank Jr. can perform better than that. The reason that he didn't perform to the best of his ability, as far as I'm concerned, is because he bottled it. When have you ever seen Eubank Jr. on the inside swinging wild punches? He normally don't swing wild punches on the inside. His punches are normally very short and compact on the inside. But against George Groves, he was swinging from, you know, swinging for the hills, even when George Groves was, you know, six inches away from him. Stood there in the corner and Eubank Jr. was swinging all over the place because nerves got the better of him. Desperation got the better of him. He couldn't hold it together mentally. And so this is where I've become a staunch skeptic of Chris Eubank Jr. Not in his physical ability, although there are physical limitations there in terms of his technique and strategy and whatever, not having a proper trainer. There are limitations there physically, but mentally, I think that's where there's even more serious limitations. He's bottled it twice when he stepped up to world level. And so I can't trust him not to bottle it again if he fights uh, Callum Smith in the final. I can't trust him not to bottle it again. He may do, even though I think stylistically it's a better matchup for him. I can't trust him not to bottle it again. So we'll see. Uh, one thing I will say though, in terms of him potentially bottling it again, he will be an underdog against Callum Smith. Yeah? He'll be an underdog and that may take some of the pressure off him. I believe he was a favourite against George Groves. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he favourite or was Groves favourite? I think Eubank might have been a slight favourite. He was close to the odds anyway. Against Callum Smith, you have to imagine he's going to be an underdog that might take pressure on him, off him and it might allow him or help him to perform a bit better. So that does have to be said. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, people. It's that man, I'm out.